for the first time since the founding of the United States of America. The world is going to do an experiment uh, in Austrian economics and libertarian ideals without a total collapse happening first. Argentina is not a completely failed economy with total collapse and revolution, because normally that's where this experiment comes from. Uh, but the United States uh, did this exper experiment, and we were really the very first country that was uh, founded upon uh, free markets, free trade, libertarian ideals, and what eventually became labeled Austrian economics. It didn't really exist back then, but the Austrian economics is what you get if you're going with freedom and free trade. It just sort of, Austrian economics is what happens. It's the starting point. And then we developed all these other economic theories uh, and, and tried other stuff, which fiat currency allows. Hi, welcome to this video. I've got Alan Hibbard with me once again. Alan, you've got a story for us. What is it? Yes, I do, Mike. Uh, so big news. So Argentina has devalued its peso overnight, and it is cutting spending to treat a fiscal deficit addiction. So this is, this is big news. They're devaluing their currency, and they're trying to get their country and their economy back on track. So the news here is that Argentina will weaken its peso over 50%. Over 50%. It's going to get cut in half to wow. 800 per dollar and also provide cuts to energy subsidies and different tenders of public works and a few other programs. Uh, so, so that's what's going on, Mike. Yeah. Okay. You know, one real quick comment on this is uh, this, is a, a, this is what is wrong with fiat currencies. Uh, that can't happen with precious metals. When you're using money versus currency, big difference here. And this is one of the things that demonstrates the difference between money and currency. The government is going to transfer wealth from anybody holding pesos to people holding dollars, basically. It's a devaluation of the peso against the dollar. And in Argentina, a lot of business is conducted in dollars, but a whole lot of people get paid in pesos. Uh, even though this is probably going to be good for the general economy over the long term because they're sort of catching up with the damage that the past government has done to the, the economic damage the past government has done to the peso uh, by <clears throat> having two fiat currencies working in a country and then the government warping and distorting one against the uh, economy uh, and having an, having it in an artificial balance. And then they're trying to relieve that balance. They've targeted, though, a specific amount here, 50%, instead of just letting the free market do it. So go ahead with your story. But I just want to point out that this would not be possible with money. Uh, you can devalue a currency against money, or you can revalue a currency against money, but you can't devalue money, <laughs> gold and silver. Exactly. Uh, Right. You can't say, OK, this ounce of gold today is going to purchase half as many goods and services as it did yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty right. of the free, the free market. It's free. Right. Whereas, um, you know, these uh, centrally managed currencies are central and they're managed. Right. So if right. you're on the wrong side of a of a central policy, you lose and you don't have much recourse. So. Right. Yeah. Um, so definitely. So so one thing to note here is that Argentina had a fiscal deficit for 113 of the last 123 years. So massive fiscal deficits. Keep that in mind because I want to come back to it later. Again, later. only possible with a fiat currency. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Only if you can print promises at will. That's the only way. Right. Otherwise, if you have to pay an honest money right when you buy something, you can't run a deficit. It's impossible. Right. So... Um, yeah, I mean, the situation is critical. There's there are some like uh, important quotes here, but we, we don't need to go through each one. Uh, one thing here is the adjustment will be painful. And there's an acknowledgement that this is going to hurt in the short run. But like the reason you do it is you know, short term pain for long term gain. In theory, everyone should be better in the long run. So that that's sort yeah. of what's happening here. OK, okay. So, so. So, yeah, key takeaway Argentine peso devalued 50%. And there's something else that's 50% off. And that's your book, Mike. Your book is <laughs> your book is 50% off. I just want to remind everyone real quick, 
It's a great gift for the holidays. It's 50% off. Get it while you can. And that's it. That's all I got. Well, I have one thing is that, you know, if you give this as a gift, uh, whoever you give it to, uh, you know, they can't come back later and say, well, why didn't you tell me? When, when, when the excrement hits the air acceler the rotary air acceleration device, <laughs> uh, they can't say, well, why didn't you tell me? So, okay, go right. ahead. <laughs> That's right. That's it. So get it now. Get it now. Protect your loved ones. Okay. So I want to put this in context. Look at a couple other stats for Argentina and then for the United States and make some comparisons. So here I have the N2 money supply or currency supply for Argentina. And you can see, maybe you can see, uh, the record low of, it's about 700 million. It's kind of hard to read with this interface, but it's about 700 million back in 2019. So we're talking four years ago. I mean, this isn't a long time, almost five years ago. Uh, you know, it says 700 million in 1990. I think you're on uh, the ten, five year tab right now. Oh, it may have uh, it may have frozen while I had all these things open. Yep, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Click Max. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so that was seven hundred million. Yes, in January of nineteen ninety. So seven seven hundred million, and now we're now we're up to almost twenty two million million. It, well, in nineteen ninety, I think. Uh, uh, seven thousand dollars would have been about the average car in 1990 maybe a mid-range car and so it's gone from seven thousand so add another zero to the current figure yes exactly so that would be roughly 218 million <laughs> yes that that same car that was what price it would have been in the United States uh, if they were using dollars, which inflated also. I mean, it would be interesting to do this against this exercise against gold and see <laughs> how many, you know. So go ahead. I'm sorry I sidetracked you there. No, no. Exactly. The inflation of the currency supply is just huge. And this is how they were able to do the deficit spending. So, yes, yeah. and it's it's totally out of control. So to your point, going from seven thousand to two hundred eighteen million would be the cost of something that's nuts. I also yeah. did want to look at the CPI. Um, so for, first, the inflation rate um, on a year over year basis, you can see that. I mean, Argentina like typically has 20, 30, 40 percent inflation, which is uh -huh. very high. Lately, it's up over one hundred forty percent. I mean, that's absolutely massive. And if we see what that looks like, the cumulative effect on that, on prices, the CPI. So with it, it compounding. Yeah, it's compounding. Yeah. It's absolutely massive. Because that previous chart we were looking at is, is just periodic. Uh, it's not compounding. This one is. And uh, it's indexed here to 100. And it's all the way up to 2,500. So this is just in seven years, prices have gone up 25x. 25x in seven years. So it, it, it just amazes me that the public actually puts up with all of this crap and they don't protect themselves more against the government stealing all of that purchasing power. This is theft. Uh, you know, the prices went up because the government created currency from nothing. It was empty currency. It stole purchasing power from the units of currency in circulation, causing this. That's the, that is a measurement of the amount of theft that the government did from its own people. Yep, exactly. If, if, if you used gold or silver, it handcuffs the government. The government cannot perpetrate this fraud, theft, and enslavement because it's all done through issuing uh, debt that uh, is paid for out of future taxes. It's, yeah. Uh, it's it's amazing, and it is a, an absolutely evil monetary system. And our monetary system works the same way. It's just that uh, the people, uh, you know, the, the masters of the monetary universe have showed a little bit of constraint in, uh, in uh, the amount of enslavement, I think, because people get fed up eventually and consider abandoning the system. Yeah. Which exactly. is what's going on in Argentina, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. So to your point about constraint, I mean, I guess it's all relative, right? Which is kind of what we're what we're discussing here. It's like, do you steal a little or do you steal a lot? I mean, you know, right. it's not like one's really better than the other. Um, 
But yeah, um, so just to put this in perspective, you know, if if inflation is 10% a year, 10% a year, if that runs over seven years, prices double, right? 2x. If, if like if the inflation rate is what it is in Argentina, prices are 25x, not 2x, 25x. So the inflation is way above 10% a year. It's absolutely massive. And to your point, Mike, is like people aren't putting up with it anymore. That's why they elected this sort of outsider, a libertarian candidate, sort of a quote unquote weirdo, right? Yeah. But the weird thing about him is he he wants fiscal discipline. So we've kind of come full circle. Right. And he's one of the only ones on the planet that seems to want this. I, I'm, I'm grateful for this experiment in libertarianism and Austrian economics. Yeah. So uh, let's move on. Then. Sure. So this is the, uh, the inflation rate uh, compounded. So cumulative inflation over this time period. It's amazing. Yeah. Since yeah. 2019, that's, uh, no, 2017. 2017. Yeah, we've yeah. got seven years here, but I actually wanted to go back even further. This is on the Federal Reserve website, but it's still the CPI for Argentina. And if uh -huh. you just look at it at a glance, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look parabolic. It doesn't look very extreme. And by the way, this only right. goes to 2014. We don't have the most recent, oh. roughly 10 years. But but the funny thing is we do have the long history. And look at this. So we're up around 100. The CPI is around 100 recently. But what was it going back? This gets hilarious. Look at these numbers. Fraction 0 0.0009. And then we go all the way back here. We're in scientific notation. This is <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. It takes scientific notation seven, to. Uh, I, I don't remember seeing this on the Federal Reserve website. Seven times 10 to the negative 10th. I mean, we go all the way back here times 10 to the negative 11th back in 1960. So from wow. 1960 to, so what was this? This was 2.8. So going to about 28. So here from 1991. Okay. Okay. So 30 years, 31 years. 30 years, so that's like a long generation, 30 years. Prices went up by a factor of a trillion. Wow. <laughs> 12, 12 orders of magnitude. You would think that this would not surprise me. I've presented stuff like this, but in different formats than this. Uh, I mean, there was uh, one where I showed the Russian inflation back in uh, at a, uh, a precious metals conference in Vancouver, Canada, uh, going back to um, uh, Peter the Great, and uh, uh, it's it, it's the same story over and over and over again. A trillion times uh, uh, devaluation of their currency like this <clears throat> is a theft of basically, you know, over that how many years was this? That's a theft of like the entire. Uh, the value of the entire currency supply at any given moment over and over and over and over again from the population to the government. And people keep on voting for all of these things because a politician says, vote for me and I'm going to give you this for free. I'm going to give you that. And it's for only free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is the same story over and over. Um, yeah. Got to get everybody on sound money. Hopefully we get there sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, so just just want to put the um, the exchange rates into perspective. This is um, this is actually measuring the strength of the U.S. dollar measured in Argentinian pesos. So mm -hmm. the dollar is is getting stronger exponentially compared to the peso. Yeah. What does that start out at back in the nineties? Yeah, nineteen ninety two. It's up a lot. Absolutely astounding. Yep. And then just for people who want to see what happened to the peso measured in the dollar. This is sort of the inverse, um, but it looks a little different because of these stair-step uh, devaluations. Right. Well, we are. The, this is a uh, linear, not a logarithmic chart. Correct. All of exactly. These yeah, they were both website. linear, so they don't yeah. they don't look. It's and not so, going to look the exact same flipped upside down because they're linear. Right. And so, by looking at it this way, you get to see the devaluations yeah. that the government has done in the past. Again, only possible with the fiat currency. Yeah. They, exactly. They they printed and printed and printed. Uh, from 1992 uh, or whenever that first evaluation was, uh, they kept, uh, yeah, 91. And they kept on printing and printing and printing. And then in uh, 2001, so, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about 
10 years of printing and then they have to do and they artificially manipulated the exchange rates and tried to peg it and hold it somewhere and until they couldn't any longer because a black market develops uh, of exchange rates and uh, and the difference between the arbitrage between the black market and the official exchange rate uh, means it means that anybody getting paid in pesos by the year uh, 2000 was getting absolutely screwed. Uh, and uh, then the government has to acknowledge reality finally. And when once the, the market forces them to acknowledge reality, that's when they have to uh, reverse the theft that they have done from one group and go ahead and steal from another group again. <laughs> Yeah, it's, <coughs> it's comical. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, you can laugh or you can cry, and so but I, I might as well laugh, you know, might as yeah. well laugh. Right. Well, yes, it is. It, you're, you're right to point out that this is also very, very sad what a government is able to perpetrate against its own population. Yeah. Well, okay, so I just want to keep keep moving here and and look at the Argentina government. How how is their budget? Um, and here's a chart going back to 1999, I think, or to 2000. Um, and when the bars are below zero, they're spending more than they make. And when the bars are above zero, they're actually somewhat disciplined, somewhat somewhat living within their means. And uh, this is basically what almost every government looks like, pretty much running deficits every year. Yeah, globally, right. Every government on earth. Uh, now, what's amazing to me is I, I don't know what was going on between... This is a very socialistic government. It has been for many, many decades. I don't know what was going on from 2004 to 2008 to where they could actually show a budget surplus. <laughs> but somehow yeah. they were able to take in more tax revenues to take more from the people than the government was supposedly spending on the people. But, you know, when you look at the number, the, the uh, percentage of the population employed by the government and the government workers never have, and, until this guy, Javier Mille, uh, until him, they never had to worry about their pay, about their uh, getting fired from their job. Uh, you know, it was the only secure job that you could get in Argentina was something working for the government, which is where you're being paid. Your, your pay roll, your check is coming from the government pointing a gun at somebody and stealing from them. So it's, it's all, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of a racket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, uh, it was in, uh, one of my videos about the 1929 stock market crash. Al Capone quote a quote from Al Capone. Those stock market guys are crooked. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the government. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is Argentina. It is the most surprising thing about this chart isn't the deficits. It's actually the surpluses. But yes, anyways, right. um, yeah, the United States looks pretty similar, but even bigger deficits. And uh, yes, you know, as we, right as we mentioned, and, ago, you know, we, I've I've shown many times that those blue bars at the beginning of the graph are just an accounting lie. It was, it's creative accounting. And all you have to do is take a look at the, the change in national debt because um, the how much you owe, if, if you're in debt, if you make more than you spend the following year, your debt will be less. If you spend more than you make the following year, your debt will be greater. And uh, there is no year during those blue bars where our debt contracted. It always expanded. And so it's, it's, it's an accounting lie and uh, it's smoke and mirrors. And, you know, I had a, um, back in, I think, 2013 or 2014, I had one of my researchers uh, go back and uh, he could only go back to like 1960, but you get the budget surplus or deficit, and then compare it to the change in national debt. And it was a $7 trillion lie back when it was 50% of whatever the, uh, if you add up all of their supposed deficits and surpluses, they only cover 50% of the national debt. So it was a 50% lie. It was amazing. 7 trillion out of 13 trillion. I think the, uh, the uh, national debt was 13 trillion back then. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's 
there's two two things I want to finish up with here. The first one is, you know, what does the balance of trade between Argentina and the U.S. look like? Because there's some some concerns here or questions that like a poor, you know, set of economic decisions in one country could affect another, and of, of course that's true. Ah, okay. Actually, I want to let everybody know that this is when I, that when I found out this was about Argentina, I asked you to put these in here, simply because, for the first time since the founding of the United States of America, the world is going to do an experiment uh, in Austrian economics and libertarian ideals without a total collapse happening first. Argentina is not a completely failed economy with total collapse and revolution, because normally that's where this experiment comes from. Uh, but the United States uh, did this exper experiment, and we were really the very first country that was uh, founded upon uh, free markets, free trade, libertarian ideals, and what eventually became labeled Austrian economics. It didn't really exist back then, but the Austrian economics is what you get if you're going with freedom and free trade. It just sort of, Austrian economics is what happens. It's the starting point. And then we developed all these other economic theories uh, and, and tried other stuff, which fiat currency allows. But what is the actual cost? I, I think, um, so you have, <clears throat> this is um, the U.S.'s uh, trade with Argentina, and we export $10 billion to them, and we import $5 billion from them. Uh, and uh, so what is it actually going to cost us? What is the difference uh, if... This, if this experiment goes bad and we don't, we're no longer able to sell anything to Argentina because they're too poor to buy anything and they don't make anything anymore uh, because their economy collapses and so we can't buy anything for them from them, what is it going to cost us uh, in the United States to allow some place in the world to conduct this grand experiment that hasn't been conducted? You know, there are people that as soon as they saw who Miele was, oh, he's a nut, he's crazy, they can't elect him. So there's people in the United States that just absolutely hate and want to stop this experiment. I am grateful for it because I think I see this as an opportunity to see what would happen if we tried this without, without us actually trying it. And so what is the cost to the United States? Have you? Yeah, well, yeah, to your point, there's, there's two ways we can look at this. So if the the economy of Argentina collapses and they can't buy our stuff anymore, there's $10 billion worth of exports that we can't sell. So is that a large number? Is that a small number? Well, let's put it in perspective. So 10 billion out of 1.6 trillion. Okay, so this is <laughs> five eighths of 1%, less than 1%. That's a rounding error. Right, so, right. So if the Argentinian so in other economy, words, we, we would not notice. There's no possible way that the U.S. would feel this. There would be a couple of uh, uh, companies that are importing Argentine wine or something like that that, that would uh, feel it if they're specializing in uh, goods from Argentina. Or actually, this is exports to Argentina. So if, if they're specializing in something, well, there's almost nobody that would be making something in the U.S., that uh, would be specializing in only selling to Argentina. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So we, as far as exports, there's no possible way that anybody in the U.S. could even feel this experiment should it go south. Yeah. So that's exports. It's about five eighths of one percent. It's kind of a rounding error. People wouldn't notice it. And in terms of imports, okay, we import about five billion from Argentina. Yeah, maybe some of it is wine. <laughs> uh, so five billion. Um, but, you know, so what if their economy collapses and we can't buy their stuff anymore? Well, we import <laughs> we import two and wow. a half trillion, two and a half trillion from around the, yeah. around the world compared to five billion from Argentina. That's even less, even less than the export percentage. Um, that's I probably shouldn't do this in my head, but that's 20 percent of one percent. I mean, it's less less than a quarter so of a percent. 20 basis points is what you're talking about yeah. then, which is uh, 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 20 one hundredths of 1%. Yeah. 
<laughs> impossible to feel. Yeah. Uh, and, and much, much, much less than even a rounding error. One of the things that strikes me here is uh, the, you know, we're, we're approaching a trillion dollar annual uh, trade surplus. Uh, you know, we're at 900 billion in uh, annual. So, and this compounds, right? Pardon? Yeah. This, this, <clears throat> this compounds, this is the uh, balance of trade with the rest of the world. Gold, uh, if we were still using oh, gold, yes. Uh, yes. international settlement, uh, when, when one country imports too much like we are doing right now, and you have to pay for it with a fixed currency supply, anything that you can't create out of thin air, gold flow would be flowing out of the United States uh, to the rest of the world, causing the rest of the world's economy to heat up while the United States goes into a deflation and the economy slows down, right? We buy stuff, too much stuff from them. There's less currency in the currency supply. We experience deflation. Our economy slows down. But as we go into too much, if this doesn't reverse after a while, uh, our stuff, stuff becomes very cheap for the rest of the world. Then they started. And so under the gold standard, the globe would experience these little bubbles happening on different countries around the world, but tiny little bubbles that would then reverse and automatically rebalance with the other economies. And this is something that we can't get under fiat currency systems. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> the since because of euro dollars and because of uh, also uh, cash, a lot of U.S. cash, about half of the dollars that exist exist outside the United States. So when Argentina inflates, they're inflating almost exclusively internally. We saw this huge inflation in the financial markets, but people all over the world invest in the U.S. financial market, not just people in the United States. Uh, we saw, you know, with low interest rates, huge inflation in housing, but we didn't see a bunch of inflation, in, even though they were creating all of this currency. Uh, ever since 2008, we didn't experience major retail inflation in the United States. And uh, a large part of that is because when we inflate, the, the sectors that we were inflating were inflating globally, not uh, something in the United States. But then we sent checks out directly to people that got, which created an increase in currency in circulation uh, in our own cities. And now we've seen massive inflation from it and a, uh, a change in velocity. Uh, and uh, it's not done yet. And the only thing that, I mean, we can either slow down the economy through a uh, big crisis, which I think is coming, or prices still have to go up further, but we haven't accounted for the immense amount of currency created during COVID. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. Well, yeah. there's there's just one thing I want to end with, um, and it, it's just kind of like a reminder of you know how did how did we get here? How did Argentina get here? And it came from a long period of essentially no fiscal discipline, running fiscal deficits over and over and over. And, you know, they're not alone. We mentioned that the United States is very similar and most countries around the world have a very similar policy and a very similar trend. And the U.S. Uh, is basically running trillion dollar deficits as far as the eye can see. Yeah. This this is a projection looking forward the next 10 years from the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget in the United States. And uh, this is absolutely horrible. <laughs> yes, it is horrifying. And so the official government projection is uh, that this is horrifying. And this is the type of stuff that eventually leads to a collapse of the, the currency. You know, you look throughout history and, you know, we're still in the early stages of uh, the collapse of the currency, but this is what causes it. And uh, notice also that uh, these wild swings start in uh, 1971 when we went off of the gold standard. It's one of the things that allows the recklessness of all of our politicians. And, you know, we have to blame ourselves as well because we vote for this stuff where, you know, they present all of these programs and things and we vote for the destruction of our own currency and our own country uh, by, by uh, doing this. We're being sold a bill of goods. However, uh, again, I had a researcher back in 2013 or 14 um, 
uh, go back and because you there there is an official budget that is uh, posted every year and it's got the deficit uh, in it. And so they're all available online and you can go back and get them. And I think we went back to 1960 and we calculated the difference of the projected budget deficit. So these projections, all of the dark colored bars on there that the government is officially projecting out into the future. And then we went and got the actual, the actual results of what happened. So if you go back uh, to 19, uh, uh, 60s projected deficit and then look at the actual deficit and then you compound all of those, you can take those bars and you can pretty much calculate that you can extend them by about 50% more than what they are because the budget, they always project on the rosy side. And here's the problem. The rosy side of the government projections is horrifying. It's projecting a collapse is what it's projecting. Uh, these things eventually need to balance. And the only way that this can come back to the, the, what this does is this is a tax that is either done directly or through inflation. But either way, it slows down the economy and it hurts uh, the average person. Yeah, exactly. And you mentioned that this all happened in 1971 when we went off the gold standard. And I just yeah. want to remind everyone, if your country or your government goes off the gold standard, you can still keep yourself and your family on a gold standard. So do that and uh, study up. <laughs> and that's all I got. Thanks. This was a great video. I want to thank everybody for watching and please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. We'll see you next time. Hi, I just wanted to tell you about Gold Silver's 111 ounce silver giveaway where you can win, 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 one, one, one. One one ounce silver bar, one 10 ounce silver bar, and one 100 ounce silver bar. So enter today and win.